Today, I want to talk about mixing techniques and most of all, your options when it comes to making transitions. This is Share the Knowledge. For the last 22 years, I've been rocking stages, playing in clubs, and having a lot of fun as a DJ and turntablist, and I've seen and learned a lot. Now it's time for me to share that knowledge by answering the questions that can help you become a better DJ. I'm DJ TLM, and this is Share the Knowledge. What's going on, guys? It's DJ TLM. You're checking out the Share the Knowledge podcast right here on iTunes and SoundCloud. And if you're tuning into the live stream on Facebook, I'm going to be talking about your mixing transition options. And after that, it is time for some live Q&A. So if you have any questions, you can leave them right here. And if you're checking out the replay or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can still ask me questions in the comment section and I'll find some questions to answer right there. And if there's a great question for everyone. I might use that for the next episode. Now, I do want to make this a real community effort. So I share my experience. If you have any experience with the things that we're talking about and someone asks a question and you know that you have the specific answer, feel free to jump in and answer that question. We're all here to help each other. Now, it's about mixing techniques and the question is um, a long one. It's kind of technical, so if you're not into the technical things, you might have to wait for a while till we get to that live Q&A. That's going to be in about 10 minutes, I think. And uh, if you are interested, listen. This is a question or multiple questions about mixing techniques. When you do a transition or drop it on the one, are there special points in the track where to do this the best? Now, before I continue, let's just break that down for a second. When you're mixing tracks, you have two different options. You can either go for a clean transition where you're actually blending the two tracks, or if you do not want to do it that way, you can just go straight from one track into the next by dropping it on the one. You have to be familiar with how to count music if you want to know what we're talking about because you use counts when you're counting, you're counting music. Um, you count the bars and the beats because the songs have structure and by understanding the structure of songs is going to give you a clear indication of what points you can use for your transition. Now, I play a lot of hip-hop and R&B and I know it's going to be a little bit different when it comes to a lot of house music, but especially with hip-hop and R&B or music with a lot of vocals, you do really have to pay attention to your transitions. Um, don't get me wrong, you do definitely have to pay attention as well when you're playing house, but I'm going to stick to hip-hop and R&B for a second because of the vocals. Now, if you're going to make a transition, you want to make sure to avoid a couple of different things. You want to make sure that you don't have clashing vocals, so you don't want the vocals from two tracks to just be playing over each other, so you have raps on one track, you're mixing in the second uh, song that also has raps, and now you're hearing two raps at the same time, that's not going to work. So you got to find your points where you can make that transition. And a lot of times the tracks that you're going to use have an intro or at least they start with a beat. That's going to be a clean part without raps or without singing. That's a good part you want to use for your mix. But then you got to find the part in the song that's already playing to mix it into. Um, but again, just to explain, mixing, actually making a transition or dropping it on the one. When you're dropping it on the one, you're counting along with the track that's playing. And when you get to that hook, to the verse, uh, to the hook, sorry, the, uh, the chorus, you count the chorus. And when the chorus is done and the new verse is about to start on that one, that's where you bring in the new track. Now, during the high part of the evening, a lot of times I will use that uh, dropping it on the one technique because I don't always prefer to do the transitions with actual blending. I'm going at a pretty fast pace. I prefer to just bang it in on the one and continue on to the next. Um, so let me get back to that question because, like I said, it was a long question. Transition or dropping it on the one. Now, are there special points in the track where to do this? So I recognize the good point for a drop is after a hook. That's correct. Within the first beat of a verse. So, yes, that's that one count that I was talking about. That's dropping it on the one. Because after a hook, the old song often has some kind of closure. 
Um, I'm not sure about that, but after the hook is done, that's where a new verse will come in most of the times. Or if you're getting to the end of the song, after that last hook, there might be just a, sort of an outro. Are there any other points that you can suggest? Now, when it comes to dropping it on the one, after the hook is a perfect point because um, the hook is the part of the song that people are most likely to sing along to. That's the part that they definitely want to hear if they know that song. They want to hear that hook. Um, so after the hook on the one is always a good point to make that transition. It is to just drop it on the one. But there are no rules when it comes to that. You can use different points as well um, depending on the situation. Now, sometimes I might be playing a track and the crowd is all into that track, and they're singing along to that entire verse as well. Now, at that point, you know that you can take the fader down multiple times, and you can hear the crowd sing everything along. Once you have them in that mood, you can find different spots in the track and take a specific line out of the verse that you know everyone's going to sing along to, and take that fader out, let them all sing that line, and then bring in a new track. But if you're doing that and you're not waiting till you get to the hook, you want to make sure that the next track that you're throwing in is actually taking them up a level. Because if they're enjoying that song and they're singing along to it and you're taking it out while they're still singing along to it, you better bring something that's even better than the track that they're singing along to. But you can definitely get people to a point that they're so hype and give them new tracks that are even more of what they want to hear, that that can work. So that could be done. But I want to add, in the last couple of years, I've seen a trend. I don't know if this world if this is worldwide, where a lot of DJs are starting to mix faster and faster. I remember a point like 10, 15 years ago, not, let's say 10, no, almost 15 years ago, uh, I was in a DJ team. Uh, with DJ Mani, we went under the name Major League, and we would be playing at a fast pace when a lot of DJs during that era here in the Netherlands were more into playing tracks like two, maybe even three verses, letting that track play out, or at least letting it play for a long time, making long transitions on every hook. And we would come in with a style where we were playing together. One would hold the mic, the other would blend the track or drop it on the one. And after he brought in the next track, I would take a track, he would take the mic. We would go back and forth like that. But we would have a fast-paced style where we would actually do a lot of dropping it on the one and also sometimes dropping it before it came to the hook uh, at a certain line and then come in with an even hyper track. But a lot of DJs weren't doing that. Now, sometimes I see DJs and they're playing a track for 15 seconds, just the beginning of the track. People are hyped. They hear that beat. And within the first 15 seconds before the actual verse starts, they already bring in a new track. Now, that can work if the next track is even hyper. It can work. But to me, it kind of defeats the purpose of playing that music. You want people to actually enjoy that music. So I see a trend of a lot of DJs feel that they are playing more hype if they play more songs and they play them as short as can be. I don't know. I don't know if that's always a good thing. So that might be different in different situations. Uh, but I prefer, especially if you see that the crowd is really feeling a track, to give them at least a portion of that track. So even if I'm playing at a fast pace, I will still give them at least one verse. So if a track starts, that'll start with an intro and a verse or intro, hook, verse, hook, and then I'm out. That's what I try to do at least. And if I see that they're really, really, really feeling it, and I can already tell that they'll enjoy another verse, I'll give them another verse. All right, uh, let's continue with this question. The more difficult thing for me is to choose the right place for a transition. So I see he kind of understands that dropping it on the one, the right point for that. But uh, when it comes to making actual transition, a break seems to be always a good part to go out of a track. If the new track has the same key as the track that's playing, it could also be possible to mix the four bar intro into the last four bars of an eight bar hook. And as the new track is going to be uh, at that start, the old track can be closed. 
Now, that's a good thing. I can already see that you understand the structure of songs. You understand how to count music because that's a little math right there, but you're totally correct. So if you have a track that's playing and it has an eight-bar hook and you want to make your transition during that hook, but your new track only has a four-bar intro, you want to let that hook on the first track, that's eight bars, play for four bars. So now you have four bars of hook left. That's where you mix in your four-bar intro because then when that intro is done after four bars, that hook is also done. So you have a flawless transition. So yes, that is a perfect point. That works. Um, is there anything else you added? You were talking about key. Key can be a factor. I don't even mix uh, according to key. But if you do pay attention to the keys of songs, that can make for even better transitions, especially if you make longer mixes. And sometimes you might think of combinations you hadn't thought of just by looking at the key. Uh, I always trusted my ear, and I was pretty decent at hearing, uh, and still I'm pretty decent at hearing when something clashes, like key-wise. Um, but it can be a good thing to pay attention to key as well. All right. So he understands that part pretty clear, I can tell. Mm, do you sometimes also mix into a verse, or is that a no-go? Do you have any other clues about this th uh, theme? All right. Mixing into a verse, it can be done, but a lot of times I see people make mixes or hear DJs make mixes that just don't make sense. They will actually start their transition while one track is still in the middle of a verse um, just because they don't hear or have no clue. They just feel like mixing and they start their mix at any point. Um, I try to keep it clean stick to the hooks, wait for that hook to come in, and then do my actual um, mix. But like I just gave uh, an example of certain tracks that I might just take a certain line in that track, know that everyone's going to sing along to that line, and switch there, drop it on the one there. I can do that same thing, but instead of dropping it on the one, I'll start a transition but I'll make sure that my transition ends right after that one specific line. So you could mix an intro of a track into a verse of a track that's playing. You have to work the EQ a little bit uh, to make sure that it's not overpowering because that track is still playing. You still want people to listen to that track, but I'll mix in the new track on the low, and I know that my intro on that track is going to end exactly after the line has been set on that track. Everyone sings along, and then the new one comes in. But to be honest, it's better in that case to just drop it onto one if you're going to do it in the middle of a verse. But sometimes it can be cool. Or sometimes, same example, you could also bring in that new track, that intro, during the verse. EQ it so you only hear the vocal, so take a lot of the bass out on the track that's playing so you hear the vocal, but you hear that new beat, so you're actually making a little bit of a live remix because now they're hearing that verse over that different track, and then make the transition. Look, there, a lot of things can work, and there's definitely room for creativity, but I would definitely suggest if you want to start playing with mixing songs in on different parts, you might want to practice that at home first just to see and listen if that actually has a good ring to it. Some things don't work and you mess up a, a track. You mess up a good thing if people are enjoying that track. You can go even deeper into preparation and find certain parts within the track where you want to make your mix. So during a verse, and actually if you're playing digitally, build in things like loops. So there might be a specific line in the middle of a verse that's dope, because they say something that could work with the new track. I don't know. My, they, maybe they say something with uh, the word time in there, for instance. And then you make that loop with that sentence that says time. And you have a new track that has time in the title. So you turn it into a little concept thing. I don't know. There's different ways to go about it. But that's all really preparation. That Those are not things I would try on the fly. Or you would have to know your music so well to make that work. Um, so yeah, no real rules except for paying attention to counting your music, recognizing the structure of songs, um, paying attention to your EQ if you're mixing, um, 
And that's basically that. You can go on and on about that, but a lot of those things are better to actually show with actual examples. Uh, and that's not what I'm going to do right here on the podcast. Um, all right. Going into Facebook for a second, Rio says, that's why I enjoy, uh, enjoy house music, especially house that throws back to 90s house where songs would be six to nine minutes at a time. Mixing is needed. Uh, I dislike the whole 16 bars, uh, got to switch songs. Makes me feel like a DJ has ADD. <laughs> yeah, look, that's the thing with the uh, different genres of music when it comes to making transitions. The structure of hip hop and R&B songs most of the times will be that you start with a four or eight bar intro, then you get a hook, which is mostly eight bars, and then the verses are 16 bars. So you are kind of stuck to that structure. You're dealing with that structure. That's how these songs are constructed. So after that 16 bar verse, you get that eight bar hook and that's all you have. It's eight bars and then you have the new verse. So if you want to make longer mixes, either you have to do more preparation and maybe loop the hook so the hook becomes longer because I definitely understand what you're talking about. And with a lot of the older house music, you could see DJs, and I used to work in a record store, and I was a hip-hop R&B DJ. Um, I played some other things, but not as much as now. And my colleague was a house DJ. And sometimes after work, we would both have gigs, and I would have four crates of records in the car, and he would have this little record bag. And I was like, damn, how, how long are you playing? Like 30 minutes? And I'm like, no, two hours. And I saw this little record bag. But that was because... He was playing house music where he was playing a track for maybe three, four minutes, then start a transition. But that transition could also be maybe a minute long or longer because the tracks are pretty similar when it comes to the BPM and especially when it comes to the drum pattern. So that's going to fit easily. And then you start playing with the EQ. Then you start playing with leaving things in and out. And it's more fun to do transitions. If I want to do stuff like that with hip hop and R&B, I have to start working with instrumentals uh, to have that type of fun. And then I would pay more attention to key and get into different things to play. So I definitely understand what you're talking about. That is a big difference with the music we play. And especially nowadays, people want it to be more fast, also the transitions. Even in-house, if I see some of these EDM DJs, they're banging through tracks at a pretty high pace as well. So that's definitely different than the way it used to be. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Transition tools come in handy too. Well, that's a good subject as well. Um, especially nowadays, you have a lot of um, DJ pools and other sources of music, but especially the DJ pools, they will offer edits and transition tools. Now, transition tools are mostly about BPM. So if you want to switch BPM, certain transition tracks will start at a certain BPM, let's say 100 BPM. And then within that first eight bars or 16 bars, they go all the way up to maybe uh, 120 uh, or more or take it all the way down. So you can go from one genre to the next. But also when it comes to edits, you have edits where they give you a clean eight bar intro for mixing purposes. But you also have tracks where they actually give you tracks that start as an acapella or they start with a verse, and after that verse and hook, the next verse comes in, but it comes in a cappella, so it allows you to actually do more with mixing. So you let that second verse play, but you throw in the instrumental, you can let that blend go on for a lot longer, um, more options. So yes, and we all have computers nowadays, there's also options to do your own edits if you want to make different type of transitions as well. So um, there's a lot available. I've received a couple of requests or questions about tutorial series that I started on YouTube on DJ TLM TV. If I'm continuing those tutorial series, um, yes, I definitely am. And in 2018, next year, which is a long way away, like three weeks, um, I'll be spending a lot more time uh, producing videos, and I'll continue some of the series that I started. I made a mistake, and this might be a good tip for people wanting to get into uh, video production, making YouTube videos. I made the mistake to start series, tutorial series, by producing a video and uploading that video, 
And then when I had time, make another video for that series, upload that video. And then after a certain point, I just started to do different things and the series didn't continue. If you plan to drop series, a tutorial series, um, record all the videos for that series at once or at least record all of that before you start uploading so that you know in advance that you're actually going to produce an entire series. I was just hype and I just started making videos and now I have a mixed tutorial series that stopped at part four, uh, I think. A scratch tutorial series that stopped at part six. A mixtape tutorial and a crates tutorial that both stopped at one. So uh, I started calling everything, everything series way too early which is not a good thing because then you get stuck and now I have half completed series. But I am making new parts of the Scratch tutorial series, the Mix tutorial series, and I'm going to start all the way over with um, the Mixtape series and uh, Crates. Now, talking about Crates, and I want to ask people that are checking in live, or if you're watching the replay on Facebook or YouTube, uh, you can tune in as well or share your two cents as well. If you're playing digitally, uh, how have you sorted your crates? What is your preferred method to uh, produce crates? A lot of people ask me how I do it, and right now mine are a total mess. But what I tell everyone is that my goal is to make my crates as small as possible because I always have too much music, and I feel having too much music only complicates things for me. So I want to have a lot of different crates for all of the genres that I might play, but I want to make sure that those crates aren't too full. Because it's easy to bring a lot of music now on SD cards, flash drives, on your hard drive, external hard drives. But I don't really see any benefits when I have more music on the computer. Uh, so I'm going to try to make my crates smaller. So I'd love to know how you do it. You can leave that now or leave it later on in the comment section um, and see how you do. If you're not familiar with my channel, by the way, DJTLM TV, I do a lot of educational DJ videos, tips and tricks, tutorials, uh, product reviews, and all of that stuff. So uh, you might consider checking that out and maybe subscribing there. Make sure you check out my previous videos. If you're into scratching, I have a series called Saturday Sessions. It's an interactive scratch series, which allows you to scratch with me from your home. And I just dropped a new one on Saturday and released it on Facebook uh, yesterday. Now, if you don't want to scratch with me, but you want to use the instrumental from that last video, you can go to my SoundCloud page as well, DJ TLM, and you can download a lot of instrumentals and scratch sounds, scratch tools there for free and practice all day if you want to. So back to the channel, because like I was saying in 2018, I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials. So basically, you can call this an update that I'm giving you guys right now. Uh, I'm not sharing a lot more about what's coming on the channel, but I've decided or actually I made a conscious decision to spend a lot more time on producing videos. So that's going to become like my main priority. I'll still be DJing. I can take my DJ gigs, play in the weekend, play late at nights, uh, spend the rest of the time with the fam, but most of my um, energy will go into producing a lot more content for you guys and some other projects as well, but mostly for you guys, and I'll be documenting a lot of it as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now, if you want to ask me any questions or request a video for DJTLM TV, you can always send me an email, DJTLM TV at DJTLM.com, and I'm everywhere on social. The handle is at DJTLM. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I do a lot of updates over there as well. And... Here on Facebook, of course. So that's it for now, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.